There is a powerful word, a powerful word that you will find in Acts chapter 3. Now, Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. Round about verse 36. You'll find words very similar to what I'm about to read. Ah, are y'all ready for the word? Yes. Are y'all ready for the word? Yes. It says in Acts chapter 15, verse 36. Then after some days, Paul and Barnabas, Paul said to Barnabas, let us now go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Now, Barnabas, the Bible says, was determined. He was resolved to take with them a man by the name of John, whose surname, his real name was Mark, the one who wrote the gospel according to Mark. And so Barnabas really wanted to bring along Mark. But the Bible says, but Paul insisted that they should not take with them the one who had departed, the one who left, the one who had abandoned them in Pamphylia, and had not gone with them to do the work. Are y'all, are y'all, are y'all? Barnabas wanted to bring along his cousin, Mark. But then Paul said, no, he can't come with us because the last time we were out doing the work, he left us. He left us and went back to Jerusalem. And as a matter of fact, he didn't help us to do the work. What's, what's the work? The work that God called me to do. And because he didn't help us to do the work that God called me to do, he can't go. But the Bible says, then the contention became so sharp that they parted from one another. They argued. Barnabas, Paul, Barnabas was Paul's sponsor, was Paul's mentor. He is the one that in chapter of 11 of the book of Acts went and sought out Paul. He sought out Paul and developed Paul and mentored Paul. But now they're arguing because Barnabas wants to bring along somebody. But Paul said, no, he can't come with us. They argued to the point where Barnabas left and took Mark with them. Paul was by himself. But then the Bible says in verse 40, but Paul chose Silas and then Silas departed. They departed being commended, meaning they were blessed by the body of believers in the grace of God. And they then went through Syria, Cilicia, strengthening the churches and all of God's people said together. Let me pray with you. Lord, we thank you for today. And God, we thank you for your word. Meet us where we need you most. I decrease that you will increase. Wherever we are in the world, online and in person, God, meet us there. You have a word for us. And so God, we submit to that in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible said that Barnabas wanted to bring along somebody in their circle. But Paul was like, no, nah, he can't come with us. Barnabas said, well, if he can't come, then I'm not going. They start arguing. Barnabas said, well, me and Mark, we just going to go do our thing. And you could do your thing. Paul's by himself. But many times we focus on who leaves. That we're unprepared for who God is about to send. And I'm so glad that he wasn't so focused on Barnabas leaving that he missed out on who God was about to send. 
Because the Bible says that he chose Silas and then they continued on the mission. <sighs> Look at somebody and say, sometimes people leave. Now, don't play. Look at somebody else. They need to hear this. Somebody came here today. They need to hear this. Sometimes people leave online, online. Sometimes they will leave. Sometimes. And before you think I'm talking about romantic relationships, I'm talking about all relationships. I'm talking about auntie, nephew, friend, sister, mama, child. I'm talking about co-worker best friend. I'm talking about your boo thing. I'm talking about sometimes people will leave. For a moment, I want to talk to you from the subject in this series. <sighs> Necessary endings. Necessary endings. There is a ruby throated hummingbird that weighs no more than a penny. And this ruby throated hummingbird two times a year in the spring and in the fall. Are y'all hearing? Are y'all listening to me? In the spring and the fall, this ruby throated hummingbird migrates from North America to Central America 500 miles in less than 24 hours. Twice a year, this ruby throated hummingbird will travel from North America to Central America in less than 24 hours, 500 miles. There is a red buckeye flower. And the way this red buckeye flower is shaped, the only bird that can reach the nectar is the ruby throated hummingbird. The other significant thing about this red buckeye flower is that it only blooms twice a year in the spring and in the fall when the ruby throated hummingbird is in migration to Central America. But the other significant thing about this, this, this red buckeye plant is that it only blooms in the path that the hummingbird takes from North America to Central America. <clears throat> I'm going somewhere with this, y'all just follow me. This hummingbird is able to take a 500 mile migration in less than 24 hours because this red buckeye flower fuels it. And the red buckeye flower is able to be reproduced or reproduce of itself because this hummingbird will reach down and get the nectar and get the pollen and pollinate it. So now both the red buckeye flower and the hummingbird are living thriving lives. Isaac, help the people, help the people, help the people, help it make sense. The way God created the world Nothing can truly thrive unless it has a healthy relationship to something or someone else. I come all the way from Memphis. I got a word from me. I need you to talk back to me. Online, I need to feel the energy. The way God created the world, you cannot live a thriving life unless you have a healthy relationship to something and someone else. Let, let me let me try. Let me try it a different way. This will help somebody. There is a blessing. I got about five people with some envelopes. There is a blessing that God wants to get to you, but your blessing needs transportation. Keep on, Isaac. Draw the picture. Get your Crayolas out. There is an answer to a prayer that you have prayed to God but your answer needs a vehicle. What are you saying? Some of us have to first understand that God's way of blessing you, God's way of answering your prayers, God's way of moving in your life will often come in the form of a relationship. I, 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 got, I got five people. Where were you at? Where were you at? Where, where were the five people? At? Just stand up. Don't be too. Don't be, look. You got the envelope. You can't be shy. Come on. 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 Five people. Come on to this stage because you got something. You got something. I, 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 so so so. How you doing? What's your name? 
Dariel, you give me this. Dariel, this is significant of our friendship. We, we have a friendship. And because we've entered into a friendship, I, I have come to discover that you have taught me how to trust again. As a result of our friendship. Thank you. That's all I need from you. You can sit down. You can, you can, you, you, you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Friendship, friendship. What's your name? Trinae. Trinae, Trinae. Don't be nervous. I got you. I got you. Watch this. Because of our friendship, you have taught me how to forgive. Because of our friendship, I have learned how to heal. Hold on to this. Hold, hold on to this. I'm trying to help somebody. Don't, don't, don't disconnect. Don't disconnect. What's your name? Chelsea. Chelsea, how you doing? You doing well? All right. Because of our friendship, I now have clear purpose. My purpose has become clearer as a result of God placing you somewhere in my life. And let me pause one second. Hey, baby online, I wasn't responsible for giving all three of the women the envelopes. That was somebody else who gave it. Like I told him to make sure he had more men than women, but he wants to bring three women up here. I just want you to know, I didn't give them the envelopes. That was somebody else that gave them the envelopes. Unpause. Thank you, thank you. We cousins so we can talk like that. How you, how you, how you doing, bro? What's your name? Kevin? Kevin? All right, all right, Kevin, Kevin, appreciate you. Finally got some help in here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, Kevin, because of our friendship, you don't realize that you spoke life over me, and because you spoke life over me, it helped me to break bondages of insecurity, of fear, and of shame. Because of our friendship, now I don't have to walk in the shadow and with my head down. I could be confident in who God called me, and you don't even realize that, but that was a result of our friendship. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, somebody else. Somebody else. How you doing, bro? What's your name? Dre. Dre. All right, Dre, Dre, Dre. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Now, Dre, you will teach me about fatherhood in ways my absent father did not. I don't need to even say anything else about that. I developed relationships, healthy relationships with these five people. And because I was able to develop healthy relationships with these five people, God was able to filter resources into my life. And now I'm a healed person. Now I can be a better father to my daughter. Now I am not walking in my insecurity, but don't, 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 don't miss it. There's still about three more people out there who are not a part of this clique who are not a part of the ones who are close together, who are not a part of the people who walked up here and came to me. But there's three more people out there that get envelopes. And I need my brother Green to get those envelopes. Stand up if you have the envelopes. Stand up if you have the envelopes. I know you can't see this online, and I'm going to give you the illustration. All right, now, 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 can, can you come closer? Can, can somebody be, Green, where you at? Can you, can you get that? Yes, can you get that? Now, brother, what's your name? Mark, do you mind? How old are you? I'm 58. You're 58. It seemed like everybody else who was up here was about 20 somethings. But you're about 58. You from Houston? I'm from Detroit. You from Detroit? See, you look different. <laughs> you talk different. You didn't speak to me when I came in, so I'm a little intimidated by you, so it's better that I don't even speak to you. It's better that I don't even build a friendship with you because you're older. You can't teach me anything. You, I, I don't even like how you dress. And as a result, I can come to church and never say nothing to you. But you had something in your hand, and I wonder what that something said. You're an entrepreneur who would help me to break cycles of poverty in my life. Hold on, hold on, online, online, online. You're going to miss this, you're going to miss this. He didn't look, he, see the package, the, it, it didn't come packaged in the way that I preferred. 
Oh, by the way, I'm talking about temptation. I'm talking about the temptation to not do relationships well. And so, and so because he didn't come packaged the way that I want him to, I missed out on breaking cycles of poverty. Because see, I don't know how to do business. I don't come from a family that does business. I need somebody to teach me. And so, and, and who was the other person? Who was the other person? Step out in the aisle. C- c- matter of fact, come a little closer. Come a little closer. Hey, what's your name? Brady. Brady? All right. How old are you? You're 41. You're older than me, all right? I didn't build a relationship with you, wasn't concerned about building a relationship with you, because when I look at you, you look mean. And because you didn't smile when I walked by and didn't pursue me like the rest of them pursued me, which meant that I had to pursue you, I don't pursue people. Time out. There comes a point in your life where the relationships you will need the most will be the relationships you have to pursue. Unpause. But because you wouldn't like them and you didn't come running after me and you, I want to be close to the pastor because you sat there and you didn't smile. I said, I'm not going to speak to her. She ain't going to speak to me and I won't form that relationship. And lo and behold, did I not know that you would be an open door that will encourage me to go to seminary. True story. You will be the one who helps me to get accepted into Princeton Theological Seminary. You didn't come packaged like a professor. You don't look like you went to Princeton or know anybody at Princeton, but I didn't know that if I had forged a relationship with you, that you would have encouraged me to write better. You would encourage me to reach beyond what other people said I couldn't do, and I would have been in seminary. I thank you. Thank you so much. There's one more. I got, I got one more. I got one more. Do I get one more? I got one more. Y'all, y'all can be seated. Y'all can be seated. Where you at? Where you at, Green? Where you at, Green? Do you, you have that? Yeah. Oh. You got somebody already in your presence and you overlooking them. They've been standing there the whole time holding what you need. But because you looking for everybody else, you done missed your blessing. Let me sit down. I'm just going to sit down. sorry because I know you came up here and did announcements or you look like the one that did the announcements you just didn't look like you had anything for me I'm looking at the older guy I'm looking at everybody you just didn't look like you had anything you didn't look like you you're too quiet you look you look like you don't speak you don't bother anybody so you stood right here when everybody came and left out of my life and you were still there the whole time holding a gift in your hand somebody say necessary endings and here I am, where, 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 where you at? And she's like, I'm right here. Can I help somebody? See, here's the thing. My family, nobody ever owned a home. Don't know anything about home ownership. But because of my friendship with you, you know someone who knows someone and you taught me, encouraged me, gave me connections, and now I'm able to get a loan to avoid predatory lending, and you made sure that I didn't get an agent who was gonna charge me more. As a matter of fact, I became my own, uh, my own agent, and now I got my first home in a place nobody would have ever thought because of you. I'm talking, I'm telling a true story, true story. I am a homeowner, so now I build wealth for my child and generations to come because of you. You helped me to break that cycle. Thank you. So those three were three blessings that never came to my life because I was committed to not doing friendships well. Because a trauma calls me to not open up, not invite people into my space. Ignorance, because I never saw friendships done well. 
I, I honestly, I ain't never saw a friendship done well. So I just keep the same friends I've always had since childhood. And we just keep doing. And I'm afraid to let anybody go. And now I'd have missed out on what God has been trying. Somebody say necessary endings. If you do not do friendships well, you will not be able to do your purpose well. <laughs> I know I didn't come to church to talk about I'm trying to bless you in a way that will impact your life in days, weeks, months to come. If you do not do relations, I know some of you love Drake. My circle's so small, it's a period, but I'm coming to speak over your life. That you don't have periods because in order for you to get to the next stage and in the next season, you're going to have to increase the people that God wants around you, the right people. Somebody say relationships are essential. But if you look in the word of God, every single believer who accomplished anything great must first reach a level of mastery in the, in the area of relationships. Yeah. I'm going to come back and I'm going to say it again. Online, did y'all hear me online? Any person in the word of God that has done anything great for the Lord had to first master or arrive to a certain level of mastery in the area of relationships. And those who did not, Samson, you saw what happened. Everybody, Moses, Aaron, everybody, Elijah, Elisha, everybody in the word of God had to learn how to do relationships better. <sighs> Many of us, the greatest, I would say this, the greatest threat to your spiritual growth is the fact that you don't know how to do friendships. Temptation. Just keep who I have. Be comfortable. Don't reach out. Don't ask. Mm -mm. Just I don't like them because they don't like them. <laughs> now, he, he looked too strong, but I ain't going to tell him he looks strong. I'm just going to avoid him because his his strength and his confidence intimidates me. So I'm just going to blame my personality and in, in being an introvert as into why I don't have a lot of friends. Keep on, keep on talking, Isaac. Keep on talking. Barnabas was determined to take with them John Mark. Paul said, no, he can't go with us. And when you look at this text, you actually see Paul assessing his circle. Why can't he go with us? Because he left us. He's assessing the history rather than the health. He's assessing the health rather than the history of the relationship. Many of us will stay in a relationship, stay in a friendship because of history rather than the health. He said, no, when I look, he left when I needed him most. And I don't care how much time, if you look at Acts chapter 13, the Bible says that Barnabas, Paul, and Mark fulfilled an assignment that God wanted them to do. So Mark had already been with them previously on a mission. But when they went on their last mission in Acts chapter 13, verse 4 and 5, the Bible says that, they, that he went. But when you look down in verse 13 in Acts chapter 13, the Bible says that Mark deserted them and went back to Jerusalem. And so now it's a different season. And when seasons change, so should your circles. Yeah. You probably want to nudge your, your neighbor and say, wake up, wake up, wake up. Somebody, when seasons change, so will your circle. What do you mean? What do you mean? If we look at the text and we take a step back, you will discover 
that in Acts chapter 13, the Bible says in verse 1, 2, and 3 that there were five people together. There was Manaean, there was Lucius of Cyrene, there was Simeon of Cyrene, and there was Barnabas and Paul. It was five people. And guess what? These, was, these were five culturally, ethnically different people. The two people came from North Africa. One was a god brother or a stepbrother to uh, the, the Tetrarch, Herod the Tetrarch, and then you have Barnabas and Paul. There were five totally different people. Paul had four other people in his circle who were smarter than him. He had four other people in his circle who were, had more experience in the faith than he did. He had two people who were from Africa. He had one who was a Palestinian Jew. His circle was diverse. Let me help somebody. But he invited those people into his circle. Your network is a group of people who influence you. And you should always, your, your influence should always be by invitation only. Because many times we have people in our circles who are there by default. They're there because we have chemistry. They're there because they were a friend of somebody else. They're there by accident. But when you look at Acts chapter 13, it took them one year. Read your Bibles. It took them one year to refine that circle. But then God in verse four and five said, now watch this, watch this. I, 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 I want to go there. Watch this. In Acts chapter 13, watch what it says. Among the prophets and teachers of the church at Antioch of Syria were Barnabas, Simeon, Lucius, Simeon called the black man, by the way, Lucius from Cyrene, Manan, the childhood companion of King Herod, and Saul. One day these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting. And the Bible said the Holy Spirit, somebody shout Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit said, dedicate Barnabas and Saul for the special work to which I have called them. Mm, it gets good. So after more fasting and prayer, the men laid their hands on them and they sent them on their way. Who is them? Barnabas and Saul. Who is Paul? But keep on reading. So Barnabas and Saul were sent out by the Holy Spirit. Somebody say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. They went down to the seaport of Seleucia and then sailed for the island of Cyprus. There in the town of Salamis, they went to the Jewish synagogues and preached the word of God. John Mark went with them. As their assistant. Y'all missed, you missed your shout. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit spoke and said, set aside Barnabas and Saul for the work that I've called them to. But if you keep reading, the Bible says they brought along John Mark with them. Ah, say it again, Isaac. The Bible says the Holy Spirit spoke and said, I need you to set aside two people, Barnabas and Saul, I got an assignment for them, all right? But as they were leaving, Barnabas said, I want my cousin to come too. Some people weren't called to you by the Holy Spirit. And so they bring along somebody that the Spirit never told them to bring along. And this is why, in a few verses later, the Bible says that John was like, ah, it's too much work. I'm straight. I tell y'all what, I'll meet y'all back in Jerusalem. He departs from them in verse 13. Some of us have people in our space, taking up space, who the Spirit never assigned to you. How many of you have people in your space, sitting at your table, in your network, that the Spirit of the Lord never said, bring them with you? They went on an assignment and Paul allowed for a friend to come because he's your friend. So now he's my friend. And so we're all friends because that's your cousin. And so we all can do what God called us to do. But God never told us to bring along Mark. And we saw it with all of the hell we went through on that assignment. Keep talking, Isaac. And so what happens is he leaves. And then Paul says, let's go back. Let's go and re-encourage the people. And then Barnabas says, let's take Mark. He said, no, he can't come. He can't come. And so they went their separate ways. And now Paul was by himself. But watch this. The most powerful word in that next sentence is that he chose Silas. He wasn't desperate. He wasn't looking for another Barnabas. 
He chose, meaning that he invited Silas into his circle. He sought Silas because there comes a point in your life that you have to seek out the people that need to be in your space. They won't always come to you. Keep on talking. Keep on. Keep on. Keep keep on talking. They're getting quiet. So, all right. Let me help. Let me help. Let me help you. So, Kenneth Boa writes a book and it's called Conforming to His Image, to God's Image. And one of the things about this book that's so powerful because it teaches you how to grow towards spiritual maturity. And one of his theses is, is that you have to be able to identify the types of people in your life. You have to be able to. And so this is what he says. He says you have five different people. He says you have VRP, VRP, VRP. Give me one of the envelopes. Give me one of the people with the envelopes right here. Come on, come on. It don't matter. VRP. Everybody say VRP. VRP. You can see it right here. VRP is very resourceful people. A very resourceful person is someone who is more than likely older than you, has more experience than you, and they help to ignite your passion. Everybody, they ignite your passion, right? So you, you have to recognize the VR people, the VRP people who help to ignite your passion. But he says there's also VIP. Give me one more person. Give me one more person. VIP. Come on, come on, come on. Don't, don't, don't be too shy. VIP, VIP. The VIP, everybody say VIP. VIP. Very important people. These are the people who share your passion. They don't ignite it. They share it. These are the people who you give permission to 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 speak into your life, people to challenge you, people who you can can talk to, people who help you in your journey. VIP. Then you have your your VNP. I like that. Let me do my VTP. Come on, come on. Right, let me do, well, give me one more, give me one more. Let me do my, v, my, my VTP. Give me one more person. You know you had an envelope. It was five people. Or you come, come on up here. You know I'm going to call the next one. So y'all come on up here. Right here. VTP. Very trainable. This is a good illustration. Very trainable people. Now, the very trainable people is usually someone who is newer in the faith. And someone who catches your passion. They don't ignite it, they don't share it, but they catch it. They catch your passion, and what you do with the very trainable person is you are, you are called to invest in their life and to help them because you're not always getting from people. You always got to give too, right? And so you have your very trainable people. Glad to have you. All right, then you have your VNP. Come on, come on, VNP, VNP right here, right, right, right here. VNP. Come on. One more. Per- Give me anybody to come up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, come on. VNP. You can get the fifth one to go ahead and come up. VNP is very nice people. Now watch this. This is what you got to pay attention to. The very nice people are the people who enjoy your passion. They enjoy your passion, but they never will invest in it. Help me. I'm, going, I'm, I'm making a turn. Y'all need to turn with me. See, your very nice people are the people who like your passion, they enjoy what you do for them, yeah. but they never will invest in your passion. They just receive, receive. They enjoy, never invest. And then you have your VDB, VDP, VDP. Give me one more person right here, right here, right here. Mm-hmm, yep. <laughs> v, D, N, A. Everybody say it with me, very draining people. Come on, oh, oh, the person next to you, is that what it is? Very draining people. Now here is the person who all they do is sap your passion. Through conflict, negativity, contention, they're always drawing. I need y'all to stay right there. So what Boa says is you have to learn how to identify these types of people in your life. Watch this. You have to identify who they are, but don't miss this. It's one thing to know that relationships are important. It's another thing to understand that you have to identify these relationships 
But what we often mess up is we don't put people in the right positions. We got people occupying positions in our life who are never destined to operate in those positions. And so we just got them sitting because we just need somebody to be available. We got an empty seat. And so you look available. You 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 look nice. We want I want you a part of my life. And so people are just in so many different places because really you should be mentoring me. But I got you in a different position. I just hey, look hey, you just over here. You supposed to be doing something else for me. But I got you over here in the drain because you don't drain. But look, 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 you have to be willing and you got to be able to put people in the right positions in your life. And sometimes that requires dismissing them. Give me three more people to come to the stage. Stay where, stay where you are. Give me three more people real quick. Anybody, anybody right here, right here, right here. Anybody. Come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus is going to bless you. (laughs) Come on. If you, come on. Watch this. If anybody else want to come, you can just stay right there. Here's the thing. There's five seats. There's eight people. Some of our lives look just like this. Your purpose is asphyxiating. Your purpose cannot breathe because of of the result of overcrowding. You got too many people in your life because you're afraid to let people go because it reminds you of what daddy or mom or anybody did in your past. So it's just best to you. You're a people pleaser. We'll talk about that in the next series. You're a people pleaser, so you don't want to upset people. So it's just better that you just play ring around. Can you change this seat with her? You just play ring around the rosy. Just let people sit wherever they want. You got too many people in your life doing too much. I got a lot of friends. Yeah, you got a lot of friends taking up a lot of space, and you don't have the right people in the right position. And what I appreciate about Paul is that he says, I am willing to release Mark, even if it means that Barnabas has to go. Watch this. Watch this. And so he releases. I appreciate you. I thank you for the time that, you know, we were able to spend. I thank you for everything you've done for me. But that was the previous season. And I sense that our priorities are shifting. I love you. I don't hate you, but I don't really have time in this season to really give to the things that we used to do. I love you. I always be a phone call away, but we're in a different season. By the way, I'm trying to help somebody get the language of how you release people. I'm just not picking up the phone anymore. You call at late hours, early hours, you don't, you don't respect the boundaries. And the best way for me to deal with this is just, just, to, just to not answer the phone. <laughs> there is conflict and has been conflict in our life that I've been avoiding dealing with because I didn't want to make you upset. But listen, I, I, I have to let you know how you hurt me. I love you, but I believe I have to love you from a distance. I appreciate you, but I don't have the capacity It's not that I lack care. I just lack capacity. I don't have the capacity with the new family, new church, new thing, new transitions to really give our our relationship. I love you, bro, because of what you did, because what we do is because of what he did for me five years ago. I keep him in my life because of what he did for me. Well, you know, when I didn't have that $500, you paid my rent, you know, so I I can't, we got to always be friends and we got to all, you got to always come over my house. I always got to let you call the phone. No, no, no. You know what? I appreciate what you did for me and I always love you, bro, but I don't have the capacity in this season. Let me help somebody though. Let me help somebody. You notice online, can y'all hear me online? You notice there are two seats empty, right? In your life, you have to be okay with having empty seats. Because what Paul did first is he made sure there was a void. 
He didn't say, well, hold on, let me wait, God. How are you going to figure this thing out? Because if Barnabas leave and, and Mark leave, then I ain't going to have nobody for the assignment. No, you know what? I realize based upon my purpose. He said because he didn't help us do the work. So he he clarified his circle based upon his purpose. And when you do not know your purpose, you will have the wrong people in your circle. You will associate with the wrong people because you're not clear about what you're supposed to be doing. So I got two seats that are that are empty, but I'm OK because I want God to fill those seats with the right people. Can you sit down for me? Because what ended up happening is that if I just need to fill the seats, then I got a lot of people doing things that they were never really called to do, don't have the gift nor the skill. And now I'm more stressed with them in my life than I should be with them in my life. And so let me help you here. Let me help you here. There are four people, four types of people that you need in your network. Four types of people. Everybody with me? Number one, you need a coach. Can you stand up? Can you stand up? Can you move down the line? I don't really know where the Lord had you in my life. I'm going to keep praying. He's going to let me know if you should be in my life. But I do know that you need to be in this position. Yes. You can sit down. You can keep standing. How old are you again? 58. 58 from Detroit, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You need a coach. Everybody say coach. coach. A coach is someone who can help you to clarify what God is doing in your life. A coach can help give perspective. They don't always have to know so much more than you. A coach on the football field probably never played football before, but he knows how to move people on the football field because he has a different vantage point. He has a different skill set. So it's never just about the fact that he played football before or she played football before. It's just the fact that he or she has a perspective and can help you to be the best possible you. You need a coach. Everyone needs a coach in their network. And your problem is you're not teachable. You're not humble. You don't want to reveal who you really are. You don't want someone to correct you. And so you cannot grow. Barnabas was like a coach. So you got your coach. Then if you keep on looking, you keep standing. I want, as a matter of fact, I want all three of you to stand. I want all three of you to stand. I want all three of you to stand. You have your coach. And then you have your compass right here. Everybody needs a compass. Somebody say compass. compass. Online, watch this. You need someone who serves as a compass. See, the reason why some of us want to disengage, this is the temptation. The temptation is to just let all the relationships in your life be organic. Just let it fall where it may. I don't feel like it. I, no, no. Your purpose is connected to your relationships. You need a compass. And a compass is a person who has been where you're trying to go. All right. I, uh, they tired. They don't want to talk no more. All right. Online, watch this. You need a compass. You need someone. She, she said, the reason why we ain't talking, we're trying to write. We can't talk and write at the same time. We, we ain't that gifted. No, 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 now look, now look. You need a compass. You need someone who has experienced what you're trying to experience. You need someone who has traveled down that road that you've already that you want to travel down. So you have to seek after someone who has what you desire. Yes. But you got to seek them out. Yes. And we got too many people in the kingdom who said, nah, I tried texting. They ain't respond. I called once and I'm not going to run it behind anybody. I left a voicemail and they didn't send a, a call back so that I'm, I'm good. OK. All right. Let me know how that works out for you. There's some relationships that you have to pursue and each and every one of us needs a compass. You did you you've led a church before you've been a seminary before or oh, you've had a, a, a family and then you you I, I want to learn so that I don't have to make the same mistakes. You have a coach, 
you have a, comp, uh, a compass, and then you have a confidant. Confidant. Come on, sir. As a matter of fact, because I didn't rush into our friendship, and I made sure I was prayerful. I know you know somebody who knows me and we got a chance to meet each other through somebody else. But I had to pray about our friendship if God was really calling you into my life specifically. And after I realized God is calling you into my life, Jerry Flowers, then I realized that you have become a confidant for me. You speak into my life. I speak into your life. We have a symbiotic relationship. You open up areas in my life that I didn't know needed to be open and I'm doing the same for you. And now we're changing the world. Why? Because I put you in the right position in my life. And so now I got to give that person permission, which means that I got to be able to reveal things about me that nobody else knows. I cannot grow in my relationships if I will not open up. If I will not tell you the truth about who I really am and how I really hurt and how I've experienced church hurt after church hurt after church hurt. And I just want to give up. I got to be able to tell somebody that. And I got to be able to allow this person to speak into my life. So everybody, somebody shout confidant. And then you need a colleague. You can sit down right here. See, a colleague is that person in your life who you've been called to disciple. You've been called to pour into like people have poured into you. Because here's the thing. God did not call you to be a reservoir. God called you to be a conduit. Well, sir, those are two big words. I forgot what happened in school. Help me to understand. God didn't call you to be a reservoir, meaning just to receive, just to receive. What's my new blessing? Who's going to pour into me? How am I going to get? How am I going to get? The Dead Sea is the Dead Sea because all the Dead Sea does is receives water from different bodies of water and never releases it. And as a result, the Dead Sea, because the Dead Sea doesn't release water, it now becomes toxic. Because it has no avenue to release. And so we were not called to be reservoirs. We were called to be conduits. Meaning that as I grow, as I'm being blessed, I'm going to find somebody else to bless. But here is our issue. Many of us are not pouring into somebody else. Or you're pouring into very drainable people. You got to identify the people, but then you got to put them in the right seats. I'm fully aware that I got an empty seat and I'm not too quick to fill it. I'm going to be just like Paul. I'm going to be very careful and prayerful about who I allow into my life. This is what Paul said. Y'all can go. I appreciate what y'all did do and what we did do together. But watch this. When the wrong people leave, the mission will never be compromised. Somebody needs to hear this. I'm going to say it again. So Paul says y'all can leave. Y'all can leave. Mark leaves. The mission continues on. Mark leaves and they go and continue to build the church because when the wrong people leave, the mission will never be compromised. And many times we hold on to people draining us, puncturing, wounding us, talking about us. You know they talk about you because they talk about the other friend to you. But you keep them Because you're afraid you won't be able to keep up the same quality of life without them. Paul, gonna leave. When they leave, Lord, how do you want to move? If you held on to Mark too long, you actually would have compromised the mission. Holding on to people, holding on to friends that you know are the temptation. I don't want to be alone. 
The temptation, I can't do this. The temptation of fear of trauma. No, you know what, Lord? I'm going to be prayerful. I'm going to release and I'm going to receive. I'm not just going to receive and I'm not just going to release. If every year you're releasing people, you're the common denominator. <laughs> Unpause. There's, five, there's four people, four types of people. And many times when the seasons change, you got to be okay with the circles shifting. Watch this. Y'all get up, y'all may be released. Watch this. Because when Barnabas and Mark leave, what happens? I'll help you. Silas comes. Priscilla and Aquila come. And Mark come. Y'all see that? You first had Manaean. You had, you know, the other two. You had five people. Then that shifted. And then now you let Mark go. You let Barnabas go. And now there's some more people because the mission must continue. But can you release them, though? Somebody say necessary endings. Somebody say necessary endings. Let us pray. God, we bless you. We thank you, God, for your word online and in person. This word that transcends cultures, transcends ethnicities, transcends um, ge geographical locations. Lord, we thank you for your word. There's some relationships, some friendships that must end so that the right ones can begin. The first relationship, God, that we need, though, is a relationship with you. So, God, help us to restore, help us to establish, help us to repair, help us to submit, help us to surrender our relationship with you so that we can work on our relationship with ourself, so that we can work on our relationship with other people. Because, God, what you have put inside of us cannot come to pass until we do relationships better. So the trauma that we've experienced, the hurt, the fear that we've experienced, God, we give these things to you. Help us to identify the people in our life who needs to be there and the people who needs to be released because God, you have a powerful anointing on the life of many and every person here is something that you want to do. And so God, we release that into the atmosphere today to receive what you have for us online and in person. But Lord, we, some of us are terrible at doing friendships. We didn't see it done well at home. We didn't see it done well growing up. Even in school, we don't really know how to be a good friend. We don't trust people like we should. We hold on to grudges. We complain. We have bad perspectives. Lord, we ask you to restore all of these things in the name of Jesus. Because, God, you have a purpose on the inside of us that needs to come out. And there's somebody else who is waiting on us to get in position so that they can thrive in what you've called them to do. Because everything that you have created and established in your kingdom is connected to someone else. I don't want to be the reason that someone else will be out of position. Put us in position. And so, God, we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we sign, seal, and deliver this prayer. Everyone in this sanctuary shouted together, amen.